I'm really excited to talk to you about this topic, Kaizen Continuous Improvement. Throughout this module there will not be much technical information and nothing will form part of the Flow Plus Lean Certification. However, there are some important principles within the Kaizen philosophy that you will find in almost every other Lean tool, so it is important to understand. Kaizen is an ancient Japanese word. It is said to have originated from Japanese samurai who had persistently practiced their fighting techniques and sharpened their sword every day, striving to continuously improve both the process, i.e. the fighting, and the product, i.e. the sword. In Japanese, the word Kaizen is composed of two other words, Kai, which means change, and Zen, which means better. Hence Kaizen means to change for the better. The definition has evolved and now commonly means continuous improvement, improving everywhere, every day, and with everyone within your organisation. Kaizen can be viewed as the collective mindset of implementing improvements, however small, with the understanding that everyone is responsible for their process, and small improvements accumulate to make much larger ones. Many of the improvements and concepts are very closely related to lean thinking. Improving flow, maximising customer value, reducing waste, involving people and working in a smarter way. Kaizen is the philosophy and culture of continuous improvement on a journey towards becoming more lean. Complacency is the enemy of a Kaizen culture. A Kaizen culture is one where people ask why all the time and seek new ways to improve to work in smarter ways. A culture where everyone sees it as their responsibility to improve. As it says in the name, continuous improvement is about never stopping and making changes, however small, towards that lean destination. The Kaizen mindset might be more prominent in certain cultures compared to others, in certain countries more than others, and in certain companies more than others. At the 2018 World Cup, Japan had just won their first game against Colombia when Japanese fans shocked many spectators by spending their time to clear up the mess and pick up any litter after the game. Unlike most other fans, where they see it as the responsibility of the stadium staff to clean up after them, the Japanese took it upon themselves to do the job. Although this may not directly be continuous improvement, I think it goes to demonstrate the cultural mindset and sense of pride of Kaizen, taking accountability to contribute and make a difference wherever possible. I would however like to stress a point here. Japan may have more of a Kaizen culture than other countries, but that is not at all to say that all companies in Japan are lean. Many companies in Japan have the exact same problems as other Western companies. So why is Kaizen such a powerful philosophy? Kaizen is the dedication to making very small changes and improvements every day, with the understanding that small changes made again and again compound to create an outcome much greater than the sum of the improvements individually. Additionally, businesses that have very large workforces or produce vast quantities can save huge amounts of money from what may appear to be extremely small improvements. The idea of small improvements accumulating to make much bigger improvements can be explained through the phenomena of compounding. Compounding is so powerful that Einstein actually called it the eighth wonder of the world. So let's look at an example of compounding to see its power. There was once a king in India who loved games and puzzles. A wise but poor man in the kingdom invented the game of chess for him. The king enjoyed the game so much that he invited the wise man to his castle and told him that, as a reward, he could have anything in the kingdom that he desired. The wise man thought for a moment and then said that since his village sometimes did not have enough food, he would like to feed them. When the king asked him how much rice would you like, the wise man stated his answer as a puzzle. He said that a single grain of rice should be placed on the first square of the chessboard, then two grains of rice should be placed on the second square, and then double that amount, four grains, on the third square, and double that amount again, eight grains, on the fourth square, and so on, all the way up to the last square, the 64th square of the chessboard. The king, thinking the wise man was actually quite a fool, said, 
You could have asked for anything in the world, but you asked for a handful of rice. Agreeing to his request, he started counting the grains of rice. He was witnessing the compound effect, and he soon filled the board with rice, and only on the 30th square out of 60 squares was already up to 1 billion grains of rice on that square alone. He had greatly underestimated the compounding effect. The amount of rice across the entire chessboard equated to more rice than the world had ever produced. This compounding effect is still often massively underestimated in today's world, and the power of Kaizen is there to help unlock it. The Kaizen philosophy can be applied to almost anything, business, personal life, hobbies, etc. The principle remains the same. We often convince ourselves that change is only meaningful if it's big and recognisable by outsiders. However, that's not the case. If we look to ourselves as an example, how many times have we set ourselves an unrealistic aim, only to burn out before we get there? Whether that be to lose weight or build a business, we start off by eating chicken and broccoli every meal, only to find one month later we are fed up and back to our old ways. If we are building a business, we say that we're going to get up every day at 5 o'clock, only to find we're laying in until 9. The thing is, it's much more important to make small changes that accumulate to make a much bigger difference, instead of a one-off sprint. If we instead try and reduce the number of unhealthy meals and walk instead of driving, where possible, the accumulation of these small changes will make a much more significant impact in the long run than the short sprint of eating broccoli alone. This may sound contradictory, but sometimes one-off sprints work very well when they're combined with incremental improvements. These one-off sprints are often known as breakthrough improvements or Kaizen events. These Kaizen events are focused problem-solving workshops designed to get breakthrough results in a short period of time, supported by incremental improvements. You could relate this to a professional golfer who practices every day but still goes on a training camp for one week to focus on a specific element of their game. We'll now go through a real-world example that demonstrates the power of small improvements compounding to create a much bigger improvement. Dave Brailsford was the head coach for the Team Sky cycling team. Before Dave Brailsford, no British cyclist had ever won the Tour de France in its 110-year history. Dave Brailsford created the term marginal gains explaining it as making the very small marginal improvements that some to make much bigger ones. He said, We are always striving for improvement, for those 1% gains in absolutely everything we do. So what did Dave Brailsford do, and what was the impact of his marginal gains? Using the Kaizen philosophy, he identified all of the small areas within cycling that could be improved. He noticed that riders would have extremely sore muscles after a race, so he tested different formulas of massage gels to see which ones led to the fastest muscle recovery. This meant riders could train for longer as well as feel fresher on the day of races. As racing involves travelling around the world, sleeping in different hotels is unavoidable. He noticed that riders would often have a bad night's sleep because they weren't used to the beds that each hotel provided. In response to this, he selected the specific mattress and pillow that each rider found most comfortable and transported it around with the team, wherever they went, placing them in the night's hotel before the race had finished. In order to minimise the chance of riders catching a cold and spreading germs, he taught riders how to properly wash their hands. Unlike other teams that measured their tyre pressure to the nearest PSI, He carried out tests to determine the fastest pressure to the nearest 0.1 psi, making a marginal difference in reducing the rolling resistance on the road. In order to reduce aerodynamic losses, he tested different clothing fabrics in a wind tunnel, switching to lighter and more aerodynamic indoor racing suits. He even went to the trouble of painting the inside of the team bus white so that any dust could be seen which could build up on the bikes and further make them slower. Finally, in order to improve the grip of the tyres, he tested different materials and rubbed alcohol on them for better grip. The end result of these marginal improvements was astonishing. Over the last 10 years, seven British cyclists have won the Tour de France, 
largely part to this Kaizen way of thinking. Just like Lean, Kaizen puts a big emphasis on the involvement of people. Dave Brailsford could not have come up with the improvements without the riders suggesting them as problems beforehand. The founder of the Kaizen Institute says true Kaizen needs to involve everyone, everywhere and every day within an organisation. We touched on this in the first module, but why is it so important to get everyone involved, especially the people on the front line? The reason why is simple. The people on the front line work at the Gemba and get the real work done. If you look at a manufacturing company, where is the value being added? In the offices, the meeting rooms or the factory? In which case, who adds the value? The receptionist, the managers or the board members? No, it's the front line operators. They're the ones that directly add the value. Without them, the system as a whole would not add any value. They're the ones that use their senses, feel the vibrations of the machines, use the systems and follow the standards. Frontline operators are the ones that can identify and fix the countless issues that, if left, escalate to create big problems. Let's look at an example. Imagine a machine is vibrating more than usual. Who is in the best place to spot and fix this problem? The manager or the operator? Let's compare them across three criteria. The distance from the problem, the speed they're able to react to the problem, and their knowledge of the machine and process. Firstly, as the operators use the machine every day, they're able to pick up on all the small changes that nobody else would ever notice. Secondly, as they're situated by the machine at the Gemba, they're in a position to act quickly. And thirdly, as they work with the machine day in day out, they have the best knowledge of the machine and its intricacies. So on all three criteria, the operator is the ideal person to solve the issue. To do this, they need to be empowered to make decisions and problem solve on their own, before small problems escalate into big problems. And this is where Kaizen comes in. Kaizen teaches the importance of empowering the operators by flipping the traditional top-down approach, where problems are identified and communicated down and solutions imposed to the frontline workers. The Kaizen approach is to challenge frontline operators to spot problems and solve them with the support of their managers. It's amazing how much the philosophy of Kaizen is replicated in many lean tools that you'll be introduced to later in the course. Kaizen develops on some very logical, simple approaches that in reality organisations don't follow. In this module we learn the difference between incremental and breakthrough Kaizen. We learn about the amazing things Team Sky are doing to continuously improve and gain that 1% edge. If we've learned anything in this module, it should be the power of compounding. It's an amazing phenomena, and that is the, the power that Kaizen unlocks. Finally, we've learned the importance of going to Gemba and involving people in continuous improvement. It should involve everyone, everywhere, and every day. Please join us in the next module where we discuss flow, another really important concept, and personally my favourite concept of lean.